Letter from America Time and John DeVig. Hi, John. Graham, you good? Good. Yeah, I'm still, still, you know, yeah, I'm going to be calm tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like the Tui uh, billboard. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> America's best president. So this is a nice light relief. Yeah, something different. That every year, you know, several times during the year, uh, presidential historians come out with these lists, and particularly after uh, a president mm -hmm. ends his tenure. So um, uh, Obama, Barack Obama, did very well. The first uh, survey, he comes in 12th on the list. Out of the top Only 12th. Only 12th, but that's really good when you consider it's early. It's way early right. for him. The further on you get, the better you look. Yeah, really. the better you look. There are even people who think Nixon was good. Exactly. You know, and um, the thing with, uh, like, uh, they have a whole range of stuff that they grade their stuff on. I mean, yeah, it's not just yeah. their opinion. They got a whole category. And what brought Barack down was his inability to work with Congress. And then, you know, so, like, fresh in your mind, you go, it wasn't his fault. No. It was the Republicans' fault. They refused to work. I mean, how are you going to work with Congress when the, the congressman goes, my sole job is to keep you from being reelected? They were willfully yeah. so, an impediment. Yeah. So, yeah. see, that's not a negative for me. I mean, it wasn't, you know, I mean. It's amazing you got anything done. Really? Was that lot? Exactly. Uh, the top, the top uh, four. Lincoln, George Washington, oh, yep. Teddy, and Franklin Roosevelt. They're all they're those considered the top four. No, Thomas Jefferson. No, you know, interesting. You know, Tommy was like six or seven or something. Okay, you know, you know he, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. Yeah, you know, um, helped uh, write the Constitution. The the second guy, um, John Adams. Adams. Shit, he was he was he was I good. Mean, he was really good. I mean, you know, if you read the the autobiography of John Adams, I mean. Amazing guy. Mm, yeah. Um, Jefferson, the Louisiana Purchase. Yeah. It bought half of America for five cents yeah. and managed did to lower taxes in the, at the same time. Did a bit of writing. He did. <laughs> he, was, he, he liked a book. Yeah. But anyway, those, you know, for whatever reasons, um, the worst is always James Buchanan. Yeah. And he's the douchebag that uh, just let the Civil War happen. He just sat there and did nothing. Yeah. I mean, just nothing happened. So, I mean, you know, he always gets the worst. Yeah. Franklin Pierce would be near the bottom. Yeah. Pierce, Tyler, you know. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, uh, he, was he the guy that just um, spoke for too long, got a cold and died? No, no, that was William Harrison. Oh. Yeah. And and, <laughs> and, and, and he was below William Harrison. And the, and the guy in the report said, anybody below William Harrison is really bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you're not doing well. Right. But anyway, you know. Okay, 12. Bar yeah. Barack will be in the top 10 easy by, you know, several surveys down the road. Yeah, you probably <laughs> think so. Um, mm -hmm. And so the two Roosevelts, Teddy and. Teddy and uh, Franklin, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. they did a, you know, both kind of. Well, Teddy was kind of like a self-made man. I mean, yeah. he was like, you know, a guy that went out and just did a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was had a lot of different interests and a lot of different things going on for him. A man to plan the canal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and then Franklin with, um, you know, he was one of those guys that, yeah, just steadied the ship through a lot of shit. In yeah. America, you know, the Depression and the war and yeah. all that kind of stuff. He had a lot on his plate, but then again, he had a lot of goes at it, more than anyone else. Yeah, four. He had yeah. four goes, so that was, you know, that was an unusual circumstance. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's interesting. Yep. Uh, we'll see where Trump ends up in the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there is a politician dumber than Trump. Now, this is just amazing to me. It's just, you know, Senator Mitch McConnell, who's a Speaker of the Senate... He came out this week and said that last year's Congress was in no way dysfunctional. No way. Mm. And you just go, you had a 13% approval rating from the public. Mm. 13%. That's why we have Trump, because of you guys. Mm. It, you know, so I'm not going to go on and on about it, but, I mean, it's, he lives in a bubble. That is just so unrealistic. No way were the, was Congress dysfunctional. What the frick did you do? Mm. I mean, they didn't do anything. It's a bit like having a, a rabbit in the elephant cage at the zoo. <laughs> and it says elephant cage. <laughs> and people go and say, it's a rabbit. They say, no, it's, it's an elephant. It says so. <laughs> yeah, it says so. <laughs> Gee, it's amazing what they think they can get away with. Oh, man, I tell you. I tell you. Come and see the elephant. 
Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, the media, the enemy of the American people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is quite an interesting. Well, tr- Trump today had that big thing in Florida. Big thing in Florida where he's bitching and moaning about the, you know. He just likes being on the campaign trail. He likes being on the campaign trail. He's talking specifically to 35% of the people. Mm-hmm. 35%. That's his threshold. That's where he's at. 65% think he's a moron. And once again, you know, the 35% that of you people that are supporting Trump, you are morons. You are the lowest gene pool in America. I don't care if you got a P. PhD from Harvard. You're a dick and an idiot to support this maniac. But anyway, the enemy of the people, I mean, he's really come out now and, you know, really trying, you know, and the whole thing's a ruse. The whole thing's a con because the Russia thing is getting hot. I mean, there's all, there's like six different investigations into this Russia thing. After he went on that 70, 70 minute, you know, bullshit thing, Mm. you know, uh, the well-oiled machine speech. The well-oiled machine speech. You know, every headline across America was about that speech. Mm. So Russia was way down. And that's, you know, that's exactly what he wants. But, you know, the enemy of the people. I just want you to read a paragraph from the First Amendment on religious and expression. Mm-hmm. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Freedom of the press, right That's there. That's quite well written. Thanks, Thomas Jefferson and, yeah. and Madison. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, you know, so once again, you know. So what, what, what's, what's the point of this? We, the we point know this. of this is that Trump shits on America. He shits on America every day. What's he He's, done that's against that first of the Constitution? The freedom of the press. He's oh, saying oh, yeah, the media yeah, yeah. is the enemy of the people. He's that not is, shutting them down. But that's a that's a dastardly statement. A dastardly statement to say that the that the press is the enemy of the American people. Oh, you can't get well, any more yeah. divisive than that. Yeah. Well, he's saying that. And an thinks, adversarial press is thinks, essential to democracy. Of course it is. But he's allowed to call them out if he thinks they're telling lies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the biggest liar in the world is saying, I'm not going to let the press lie. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, okay, well, we'll, we'll just go through this That's a little okay. bit. We'll just go through this a little bit, okay? Mm-hmm. He comes out and says, the leaks are true, but the reporting is false. Figure that out. Okay. The leaks are true, but you guys reporting on those leaks make them false. Oh, so he's saying there are leaks, but you guys, uh, I know what the leaks are, and you've got it wrong. Well, I don't know. I mean, no, you work, you know, I don't you work think it out. That's what it might be. Uh, oh, gee, sorry. All right. Sorry. Yeah, no. no problem. Must no. be important. Uh, no, it's not. Oh. Uh, okay, so the, the, in that press conference, uh, you know, just a little things about the press conference. We won't go over all of them, but no. I love some of the stuff. I mean, because the, the media is starting to fight back now. They're starting to fight back. Joe Scarborough on, um, on Morning Joe Report looked right down the camera and said to the White House, if you keep lying, we're going to keep reporting it. Every time you lie, and he said it, you lie, we're going to report it. Checks the job Jake, of the media. That's yeah. fine. But I mean, just, but now they're calling him lies. They're saying mm-hmm. this guy's a liar. Mm-hmm. And then Jake Taper from uh, CNN, he came out and said, you know, he looked unhinged. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, and then uh, the, an app, uh, a guy named Alexander from the New York Times actually questioned him during the thing when he said that he had the biggest electoral college vote, you know, win since Reagan. And this guy from the New York Times said, well, you know, George Bush Sr. had 435. Mm-hmm. Clinton had more. Barack had more. You weren't even close. And then he followed up with a good statement. Why should the American public trust you when you say that we give fake news when you give fake news? Mm-hmm. And then Trump, this is, this is Trump's answer. I heard it. Somebody told me that. Oh, and I've seen that around. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's just on. Believable. He's a child in a man's body. Well, you know, I don't know. There are people like you. You had people like that at school. People that make up stuff. Yeah, but this is this is the president. This guy's this guy's supposed to be the president. I shouldn't say that because he's an asshole. To me, he's just an asshole, and he's not a legitimate president because he doesn't honor mm. the Constitution, which he swore an oath to uphold. But no, he is. No, he's not. You're reading too much into it. He is not shutting down the press. He's allowed to criticize the press. You know, he is allowed to criticize the press. That's all he's doing. John? Okay, okay, okay. okay. A month in, he's he's a whiny little bitch is what he is. (laughs) I mean, a whiny little bitch. Yeah? He talks about his electronic 
his votes winning. He talks about, he said, I've been on the cover of Time magazine more than anybody. Not yeah. even close. Yeah. Hillary Clinton's been on more times than you. He's been on like 14, 15 times. Richard Nixon's the leader mm -hmm. 55 times on Time. Really? 55 times. What's wrong with Time? I know. What the hell is going on <laughs> this there? This second, Charles Manson. You know. But he you don't have to be good to be on the front of the Time. You know, he bitches about that. He bitches about Hillary Clinton again. He keeps talking about stuff on the camp. Has he ever uplifted America? Has he talked about a policy, about a program? No. He keeps whining. and He's such a shallow, no good piece of shit. I, I'm sorry that I've got to be so graphic about this, but these are my honest feelings. I've never felt any way, anywhere near about somebody in the White House that I feel yeah. about this douchebag. Yeah. I'm he with runs you. America down every I'm, day. I, I'm with you. But that's why I w want to be, and I try to be vigilant, that those criticizing Bush don't start to fall into the trap of it's, making stuff up that isn't true. Okay, because that, Trump, that Bush. dilutes the argument from, shall we say, our side. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, get, I don't I'm, think his criticism of the press contravenes Article 1 of the Constitution. I do. I do, because he's, he's saying it's the enemy of the people. That's treason. Mm. Well, you know, you know, you look at it any way you want. That's treason. You know, adversarial press is, is, is paramount. Of course it is. You know, and he's, and he's just trying to, you know. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter because he's speaking to 35% of the morons in America that, that support him. Although when yeah. Barack Obama was in, especially the first term, Fox News, you could say they were the enemy of the people too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. They well, just well Barack stuff stopped up. going on him for a while. Yeah, we see Barack criticized Fox in yeah. a very witty, oblique way every yeah. now and again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I suppose you're right. I suppose I get a little heated up because I, I just don't like the fact that he that he's he's always ragging on America and the fact that the Republicans. I mean, if if anybody mm. from the Democratic side said any of the shit that this guy says, the Republicans would be going bananas. Oh, the Republicans don't know what to do, and they and they're just silent. I mean, history is going to judge all you Republicans as total douchebags. I mean, it's not going to be good. It's very reminiscent of the Senate during Caligula's time. Yeah. In Rome. They didn't really know what to do. How to, whether to praise him, get behind him, or are we going to get stabbed if we don't? And, uh, or do what? we point out the mistakes? Don't we? Oh, yeah. dear, oh, dear, oh, yeah. dear. Yeah. And then the other thing I just wanted to point out in this press conference, which, mm -hmm. which I really don't, you know, which really gnaws at me. Kellyanne Conway now is poison. MSNBC is bander. Black she looks loser. really, really worried. She looks, she looks like a wreck. She does, doesn't she? Yeah. Oh, the poor thing. She's, uh, yeah. th she looks like she's aged two years. Yeah, but she's banned from a couple media organizations, CNN and MSNBC, because she lies all the time. Yeah. Stephen Miller, his 31-year-old nipkin-poop numbnuts, who went on four shows a week ago and lied on every one of them. And you know what Trump does? He puts him in the front row at the press conference. Mm. He honors lying. Mm. He says, you lie, you support me, and you lie through your teeth, I'm going to put you in the front row. That's pathetic. That is pathetic. What's his name? Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller. Now, you sent me a thing this week. It was really disturbing how he went off about thinking that the executive branch of government Shouldn't be was the only one that really mattered. And executive branch, that means the White House, the presidency. Yeah. You have the judiciary and you have the Congress and Senate. Yeah. That was a nice little thing you sent me, too, by the way. Oh, about how good, they... Good little reminder. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah the, how they work um, as... as checks and checks and balances checks to and each balances. other. It was really disturbing that someone in a position of, of you'd think they know how America works, yeah. but that he didn't understand exactly how inflammatory his words were. And they were, we'll just make it work. The executive branch is going to yeah. make it work whatever it's going to take. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, that's no. That's no. like Nixon saying, I'm not going to hand over the tapes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And they're really, with this Russia and Watergate, they're really drawing a lot of parallels to this because, you know, Nixon tried to fire the attorney general. Yep. He tried to fire this person, that person, and shut it down, and eventually he couldn't. And Trump is really working overtime on this Russia thing. Yeah. It was a marvelous thing, Watergate, for showing. You know, this the Trump presidency might show America at its best if it comes out okay. Um, From, it, in what way? It, the, just like Watergate? Well, if they, if they discover something to kick his ass oh, out, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd be applauding. If he tries to employ um, the executive branch of the office as something over and above, yeah. having power, executive power over the others, yeah. then no, he's got to be called up on it. And in Watergate, when Nixon was told, 
uh, I'm, Mr. President, very sorry, but you're going to have to hand over the tapes because that's evidence. He said, no, <laughs> yeah. I'm not. It's yeah. the executive branch. That's right. And they said, no, you're a citizen. Yeah. And he said, no, I'm the president. They said, you're a citizen. <laughs> and so he fired the, um, the what's his name? The Dutch, uh, Attorney General. Yeah. Um, who was bringing it? Scalia? Uh, was it Scalia? No, it wasn't Scalia. Joseph Scalia? No. Archibald Cox or something? Archibald like Cox, yeah. Yep. Yep. And so the next attorney, attorney general was appointed. And he says, excuse me, Mr. President, you, can you hand over the tapes? Yep. Yep. And Nixon goes, what? Yeah. And, and sacks and him too. Yep. And that was the rule of law. Yeah. I mean, that, and see, now we don't have that. All the Republicans and all the, the, the they're just spineless. Mm. They're just spineless. Now, I'm, the bottom, the inline of this might be a revolution. And that might be, you know. And oh, that, God. Not a revolution, but like a, a re-examining, of, you know, and there might be some good come out of it. But other than that, I don't, you know. Eh. If, yeah. In order for something really good to come out of you it, know. it's going to have to get worse before it gets better, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Well, I think it is going to get worse, you know. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, you look at this Russia thing, okay. I mean, there's a lot of things about the Russia thing, all right. But just three of them. His campaign manager, Paul Manafort, had to quit because of ties with Russia and money. Well-oiled machine. Well-oiled machine. Nigel Carter, you haven't heard this guy's name, but he was a financial advisor to Trump in the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. Went over to Moscow, had dinner, got paid, had to sever his ties with Trump. National Security Advisor went over to tr Russia, spoke, got paid, and then in an official capacity spoke out of turn and with his ties with Russia. So there's three pretty important people with ties to Russia, with ties to Trump. Mm. So there's something going on. And, you know, the thing about the, when he fired, you know, General Flynn. Okay, so Trump knew way before, he knew in January that he had done this. He says he fired Flynn because he lied to, to the vice president. Well, why didn't Trump tell the vice president? Mm. Mm. I mean, it's just, you know, I tell you, you get near, you get near Trump and, 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 and you know, shit hits the fan. You're, you're, you're the one that's going to fall. It's amazing how often these things come down to that, that double banger question that gets, keeps getting asked. Why did you know when, when did, when did, did you, you know, know it? it? Exactly. That's the that's bottom line. Yeah. But, you know, okay, so I mean, just want to talk about losing because Trump's a loser. Mm. You know, he had the immigration ban, lost in both courts. You know, he had to fire his national security advisor. And then he picked, and then, this is how stupid they are. They picked this guy, Navy Vice Admiral Robert Harwood, who used to be a SEAL, who was a really top guy. They offer him the job in public, and he turns him down. No. They didn't even know the answer. I mean, how stupid can you be? It's just it's, such a bad look when people turn down that. It's that sort of thing that uh, people really, really don't want to turn down because they feel, especially military people, yep. feel a duty to the nation. If you're asked by the president to do it, Robert yeah, McNamara didn't really want to do it. No. And but Kennedy you, asked him and he said, I'll do it. So, okay. I'll do it. I'll do but it. this guy looked at it and went, nah, I'm not even going near that. Right. But this is, the, this is the stupidest thing. His labor secretary, this guy Andrew Putzer, hmm. I, I love Bill Mayer this week, he said, that's not like something you pull out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It's half yid it. <laughs> but anyway, He's the CEO of, of uh, Carl Jr. and Hardee's. I mean, mm. he's a multi-squillionaire. And this is what brought him down. He had to withdraw his nomination for labor secretary because he hired, and this happens so often with senators, with governors, people in politics. I don't know what it is. It's their Achilles heel. An undocumented immigrant as a housekeeper and didn't pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> How many times has this happened? Yeah. It's over and over and over again. I'm going to, oh, I'll just get this Guatemalan woman here and I'll pay her a buck fifty. And, I mean, you're a squillionaire. What is it with you people? It's well, at least he didn't do a Schwarzenegger and better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> but, you know, and like Trump says, you know, he... Well, we're going to read card for that one, have I? <laughs> oh, come on. No, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know... I mean, the, the whole thing is in disarray because, you know, Mike Pence is over in Germany right now. He gave a speech the other night, and it was just w really lukewarm. I mean, yeah. it was just really lukewarm. And then uh, John McCain is over there as chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and he just got up and said, the White House is in disarray. I mean, just laid it right on the line. Yeah. So it's in disarray. Yeah. We've got major problems. They don't there. know how to do it, do they? They really don't. Well, the thing is, they haven't. There's 691 positions in the White House. High, yeah. 31. That's all, all they got. 31. Oh, no, really? There's 630 short. They don't even have names. And see, that's kind of the way Trump operates. As I told you. Who's got some of the water, the Espadistra? 
Well, you know, that's what I said. You know, Trump is one of those guys that he, in his small world, he's the big shot. Yeah. This is too big a world for him. He's, he just can't. And then the thing that annoys me uh, again about Trump, everything annoys me about him. But, the, you know, he says, I inherited a mess. He didn't inherit. He, he inherited the best economy we've had in 15 years. Yeah, of course, that's a, just a, such a cheap shot. A cheap shot. Yeah. But everything no, about not my fault. It was just such a mess. So it was, uh, he did it. Yeah. Over there. I, yeah. Can't, I cannot tell a lie. Yeah. He did it. You know, everything <laughs> is just such, you know, such a cheap thing with him. But anyway, you know, mm. you know. Uh, you know Cole. What? Huh? Cole and golf? Cole and golf. Well, okay. A couple things on the campaign trail that he said. You know, I like to pick a little things. He was, you know, he went into West Virginia and said he's going to open up the mines and get all these jobs back. Yeah. The president of the coal union told him before he said that, that no, even if you open the mines, jobs ain't coming back. Don't say it. But he says it anyway because he didn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit about America. He yeah. doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. It's all to do with the it, price of coal. It's, it's not whether you're allowed yeah. to go and get it or not. Yeah, there. and the natural gas is killing coal. And then all those operations in West Virginia, about a fourth or a half of them have moved to the West. Yeah. And, and that's just facts. Yeah. You know, and people are so stupid that they, you know, live the, believe the shit. The third of Russia's made of coal. You just go in and dig it up. Well, yeah, yeah. But now, see, the other thing is... And then on golf, he, he criticized Obama for playing golf the whole campaign. Said, I'm not going to do that. This is the third weekend in a row. He's down in Mar del Lago this weekend, third weekend in a row, playing golf. No. Third weekend in a row. He's playing golf. He's so full of shit, folks. You can't, you know, anything this guy says. I had a go at golf, but I found it took up too much of my time. It does take time. You have to relax. I and love golf. So I don't do it anymore yeah. because I think that's a whole afternoon. I've got things to do. I would have thought Trump might have thought he had things to do. Well, you, he's got to be busier than me. You would think so. But, okay, last couple of things on the, on the Trump story. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. He's killing America financially. Secret Service is in, the, is in Trump Tower. He's paying Trump. They're paying Trump. Every time they go to the Mar del Lago, they pay. They pay. The Secret Service, the government pays. He's, his family business is making money off of America. He has done nothing for America at the moment. You people are fools that support this guy. It's a joke, and you people that support him are a joke. I mean, you've got no idea. And I think, you, John, I think the criticism of the people who support Trump, yeah, I don't think it's good to lump them all together as well. I'll lump thing. them together. They piss me off. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. But it's well, Trump, Trump that pisses you off. The, the, the people well, voted for Trump for some various reasons, and some of them, some of the reasons, are worth listening to. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. But when he stands up there and repeatedly lies, and everybody knows he's lying, and he knows he's yeah, lying, yeah, yeah. and then you go to rallies and people are cheering and clapping and saying, yeah, yeah, Trump gave it to the media, Trump gave... You know, nobody likes the media at times. I mean, no. I don't like the media. I mean, it's one of those... So they're going to clap. It's <laughs> one of those punching bags. But to, to repeatedly just see how stupid this guy... And, and my whole point of tonight's presentation is... Yes, sir. I don't like the way he shits on America, how he constantly downgrades America. I haven't heard this guy say anything, you know, decent about our country, my country. And it pisses me off all the time because he's constantly downgrading it. Yeah. And he's done nothing. I'm really surprised how well he got on very palsy wells with Captain PC, Mr. Trudeau from Above the Border. <laughs> yeah. Well, they looking happy. You know, Trudeau just had to walk the tightrope. I mean, you okay. know, I mean, we live right next to each other. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Graham. We'll find out what happens in another seven days. <laughs> Dog ears. <laughs> Dog ears. Here you go.